Wednesday show. Wednesday show. Wednesday show. Wednesday show. We are recapping. I I just realized I, I never posted on, on like I usually do. We're recapping this past weekend. Um ah! Walt Disney World Marathon Weekend. Right now, over on the From the Screen of Theme Facebook page. And my YouTube channel. And we'll put the, the link for the YouTube channel in there, too. <laughs> How's everyone doing? Are you guys doing well? Hopefully everyone's doing well. We're coming to you from my lovely condo. Oh, <laughs> Where we're going to be doing a recap of this past weekend's Walt Disney World uh, Marathon Weekend. It's going to be fun. We're going to go through. We're going to share some pictures and do a lot of other stuff. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. You just wave back. I mean, hello. Um, yes, we got exciting things that we're going to be talking about tonight. So if you guys want to join us, come join us. If you don't want to join us, well, shame on you. No. If you have other things to do, I don't blame you. That's fine, too. Um, but we would love to have you. And if you know anyone, send them over as well. Hello! My fellow 5Kers are here. Or the mom of the 5Kers is here. Hey, hey, hey. How you doing, Shelly? So, yeah, today we're going to be going through, we're going to be doing a recap of this past weekend's Run Disney uh, Marathon Weekend, the 2023 Marathon Weekend. We're going to give people about, yeah, let's do another 30 seconds before we start doing the thing here. <clears throat> um, also, I'm a little nasally. I'm not sick, but I think I'm just exhausted. So I've been like trying to get as much rest as possible because I lost a lot of time. Um, or a lot of sleep. I lost a lot of sleep. We'll get into that stuff. If you guys want to get into that stuff as we go through here. How did the Frank fam do? I heard the Frank fam, but I wasn't sure if I heard the Frank fam or not at the starting line of the 5K. So, uh, we'll see. Is this Saturday? Yeah, so close. Oh, my gosh. I cannot wait. I've, I've done zero work this year, pretty much. I've worked a total of three days so far in 2023. I work tomorrow and Friday, and then I'm off for another seven days. Oh. It looks like shutters and blinds for the uh, goofy one. We're, we're, we'll get to that. We'll get through all the all the medals here. Hey, hey, hey. How you doing, Victoria? Kids are great. They loved it. Okay. Let's get this party started. We're going to start the 699th. That's right. We are one week away from our 700th episode. We're going to talk about what that's going to be in our news. Let's start our 699th episode of the Wednesday show in five, four, three, two. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the 699th episode of the Wednesday show. Today is January 11th, 2023, and I'm your host, as always, Brent Dodge. Hello. <laughs> that was like the weirdest, most dramatic hello I've ever done. Uh, today we're going to be doing a recap of this past weekend's Walt Disney World Marathon Weekend. But of course, before we get to that, let's talk about our news for the week. First off, if you didn't hear just now, it is the episode 699 right now. Next week is episode 700, and of course we're going to be doing something special for it. Completely unplanned. This was not planned at all. But we will be coming to you guys live from the Great Big Sea, the Great Big Blue Sea, Somewhere bum, bum, ba -dum, ba -dum, beyond the sea. Somewhere. That's right. We're going to be going on the Disney Fantasy. Oh, that's the glass from the inaugural, uh, the preview cruise for the Disney Fantasy. We're going to be on the Disney Fantasy next week, which means that because we're on the Disney Fantasy, naturally we're going to be coming to you live from the Disney Fantasy for our 700th episode. 700 episodes. That's insane. I cannot believe we've actually hit 700 episodes. Well, we haven't yet. Who knows? Like, I might get hit by a blimp or something in the next week, and maybe I'd never hit 700. Uh, we'll see. So, 
Uh, also, if you have not already noticed, we have been doing a YouTube video every single day here on my YouTube channel. And we've also been doing a YouTube short every day as well. So make sure you continue to go check those out. Give them a like, give them a watch, share them with a friend if you think they might like them. And that also brings us up to whether or not you guys want to have some extra innings tonight. Let's see what our YouTube subscriber count is starting at tonight. And as always, if you guys get more subscribers as we go on here, the night will go in longer and longer. We are started at a whopping 2,509 subscribers. Yes, we passed 2,500 yesterday. Um, so even if we get one, we're at 2,510, which is not too bad. Um, but <laughs> let's. Um, so yeah, keep on spreading the word. Let people know. And of course, as always, tonight's episode is sponsored by. Oh, I started taking the ball out before I did the. It's all about the mouse travel jazz hands. Make sure you stop by. It's all about the mouse travel.com for all of your Disney travel needs. All of their services are absolutely positively 100% free. So make sure you book with them for your next Disney vacation. Okay. Um, let's, let's get this. Let's get to it here. We are going to start doing a recap tonight of the Walt Disney World Marathon weekend. Now, um, the, the big question I got a lot of times, if, if you didn't watch two days ago, right? Monday. Yeah, Monday I released a, a video on my YouTube channel answering some of the most common questions I'm getting about the Walt Disney World Marathon Weekend or, or just Run Disney in general. And I answered a lot of questions, but I did leave some questions on the table because some questions were things that I talked about here on the Wednesday show before. But there's also some on there that I was just like, okay, like I can't get into all this stuff in this one single video. So we'll kind of, you know, separate a little bit every single day. So let's start off with the big one, because a lot of people who don't really know me ask the big question of how many run Disney races have you done? I have no clue. However, last week, if you were joining us on the Wednesday show, we did figure out that I've done over 1000 run Disney miles, which is a lot of miles over the years. This was also my fifth time, which is crazy. My fifth time doing the dopey challenge. It's been going on for 10 years. I've done half of them. Actually, I've done the last half of them. And then in addition to that, I have also done the full marathon a total of seven times, including the five during the dopey, and then two separate times where I just did the marathon during that weekend. And then on top of that, I've also done the 5K, 10K, and half marathon during this weekend without doing the dopey challenge as well. So I have done all of these races numerous times, so I have a pretty good idea, a pretty good grasp. On them. And then in addition to that, I've done every single, um, like I've done all the wine and dine challenge weekends and, and uh, I've done a lot of races. I've lost a lot of money throughout the years to run Disney. However, you spend money on what makes you happy. It's not really losing money. Although I'm extremely, extremely, extremely uh, poor because of run Disney throughout the years. So what we're going to do here is we're going to kind of go through and we're going to do a recap of every single race while we go through and do these recaps of all the single races. We're going to be showing you the medals. We're going to be showing you some surprises that they also threw at us during the course. We'll also be showing you some character pictures along the way as well. Those are actually pictures of my nieces that popped up on the thing there because um, they're my, my background picture. Hey, guys. Uh, <laughs> but while we also go through, I want to answer as many questions as possible. I already see some questions coming in, so let's start off with some questions, and then we're going to get into the 5K part here. Um, wasn't there a marathon that you and Frank ran then hightailed it to a resort for another race? Not a marathon, but a 5K. And let's let's start off with this because this is one of those pet peeves that a lot of runners have. A marathon is only 26.2 miles. A that, No other race is a marathon. The only marathon is 26.2 miles. A 5K is not a marathon. A 10K is not a marathon. That's a 5K. It's a 10K. Um, half marathon is 13.1 miles. So, yeah, we did a 5K, and then we uh ran over to saratoga springs because at that point up until before covid a lot of the resorts did special race events every single week so you could go over there you could sign up so the one at saratoga springs was 20 dollars. you could do it every single thursday so we used to have it so we, we used to go through and do the 5k for the dopey challenge and then as soon as the 5K finished, we would go over to Saratoga Springs, and at 7 o'clock in the morning, that's when that uh, it was a 1.44 mile race would do. And we'd go through and we'd do that 1.44, which would actually bring up our total mileage for the whole week and running to 50.04. <laughs> so, yeah, it's kind of crazy. 
Um, also, I, I had a friend going back to the, the marathon um, for the races. I had a friend who always called five case marathons, and I would always correct them. I was always like, "No, that's that's not a that's not a marathon. That's a five k." And then he ran a five k, and he's like, "I did a marathon." I'm like, "Do not tell people that." And then he told people that, and then people really ridiculed him like no other. And he said, "Oh, maybe I'll do a marathon someday." And then he realized how long it was, and he's like, "Oh, I understand why people would be upset." If you call a 5K a marathon. Uh, um, also, I don't know if anyone knows. So the original idea for marathons came because of battle. It was called the Battle of Marathon. And they had a runner who ran from where the battle was taking place to the the um, king or the, I don't know, some guy. And that guy was 26.2 miles away. And he ran there, delivered the message, and then he died on the spot. So the first time anyone ever ran a marathon, they died. But... That's how a marathon was actually created because it was 26.2 miles from where he started to where he ended up dying at and delivering the message. And that's how marathons came about. What? Um, let's see here. I am so impressed you ran, run dopey every time. I was exhausted just spectating the 5K. So, yeah. Uh, the, the, the worst part about doing dopey is waking up at 2 o'clock in the morning every single time. In fact... Most of those days, I got very, 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 very little sleep. So um, so the resorts no longer offer a run. They still have not brought back the runs to the resorts, unfortunately. There, there's there been a few, like, special ones that have come out, but it's not, like, the weekly thing like they used to do. So someday, hopefully, again, because I absolutely love them. I thought they were great. But sadly, not yet. Okay, while I continue going on here and going through the 5K, like I said, if you guys have any questions that you want to throw out there, throw those questions into the comments below, and we will answer as many questions as possible. Okay, so for the 5K, 5K is 3.1 miles. The 5K starts off in the marathon, or not in the marathon parking lot. It starts off in the Epcot parking lot. So the course goes, oh, you know what? I have an idea. I don't know why I've never thought about this. Because I'm always talking about like, oh, I wish I had a map right here. I wish I had. A map. I've got the My Disney Experience. We can pull up the map of the parks literally right here. I just thought of this. I don't know why I've never thought about this before. Okay, so uh -huh. technology. We're finally coming there. Like ten years too late. Okay, so for the race, you start off in this parking lot and then see where it's. We'll try to get this here. Okay, so you start off here, and you run up here, and then you run down and around, and then you run to the backstage area. So when you go through the backstage area, you eventually come out over by test track, or you enter into the backstage area by test track. You run underneath test track, and then you go over towards the Mexico Pavilion. So between the Mexico Pavilion, or right next to the Mexico Pavilion, that's where you can meet Donald Duck in his sombrero. Um, when you enter the park you actually go past where that meeting greet usually is you take a left you go around world showcase until eventually you get to uh the international gateway when you get to the international gateway you go out that way you go around the skyliner and then you enter backstage over by the uk pavilion you enter over by the uk bathrooms you take a left you go past the canada pavilion and then you continue going down the path between world showcase and future world and then you go past connection shop go past Mission Space, and then you exit by Test Track. And then instead of going right where you can see the runners coming in, you take a left, and then you go behind the Play Pavilion, or what's going to be the Play Pavilion, and then you go underneath Guardians of the Galaxy, where the, the ramp is at the start of the attraction. You take a right, and you go into the parking lot, and that is where the finish line is. Now, if you follow my Instagram, then you probably have an idea that when i do these races i want to meet all the characters like that's my goal is i want to meet as many characters as possible during these race weekends so let's get us started here oh did i not take a picture there all right so the first i think i accidentally deleted one of the pictures so right before you entered in or when you were entering backstage area the first characters they had there was tarzan and kala I had never met Kyle before, and I was freaking out. I found out later on that Kerchak, aka the other, the, the male version of Kala, pretty much, um, he was also switching out with Kala at the at the meet and greet. 
But unfortunately, when I went, well, not unfortunately, I was still excited to meet Kala. But unfortunately, they would also have it so Kerchak was switching out. The downside of this was later on in the race weekend, they also had Kala out and Kerchak was switching out. And when I got there, Kala was there, but Kerchak was not there. So I missed Kerchak twice. I had a chance to see Kerchak, but unfortunately, it just did not happen. And then when you go into the park over by the China Pavilion, they had Mushu there. And then after Mushu, we ran up to... Oh, that's why they're not here. Ha-ha, ha-ha, ha-ha. <laughs> I know exactly why not, they're not here. Because I was with Frank, and Frank just got a new phone. So he's like, my picture's a better. So we, we used his camera a lot for a lot of character pictures. I wasn't with Frank for those first two. I was with him for the last ones, however. So... Then we went over, we met Abu and the Genie from Aladdin. They were over in the Morocco Pavilion. And then you go backstage, over by the backstage area, we met Max, a.k.a. Goofy's son. And then shortly after that, Frank's son caught up to us, and we met Chippendale in their Rescue Ranger outfits. Very, very exciting. So those were the characters that we met during the 5K course. After you go through the whole 5K course, you get your medal. Now, the whole thing is celebrating the 30th anniversary of the Walt Disney World Marathon weekend. I showed some stuff last week. I talked to a lot of people this week, and they're like, well, no, it's an 80s theme. I was like, no, it's a 90s theme. Because all of the different stuff that they had was what was popular in 1994 when the marathon weekend happened at Walt Disney World. It might not have been popular in the rest of the world, but the fashion statements or the fashion designs that they had at Walt Disney World in 1994 was this very colorful, very hip theme. So here's the medal for the 5K. There is moving parts to it. Pluto does run around here. And then on the back bit, it does say, I did it. Yay. I do like the shades. Though. I think the shades are pretty cool. I'm also wearing this shirt right now for the 5K too. Um, out of all the shirts, I think this might be my favorite just because I love yellow. That was my favorite color. So... But that is the 5K medal. Uh, let's go through questions here, and then we're going to continue going through and doing a recap of our 10K here. Uh, do the balloon ladies have to pay to participate in the races? Are they the same ladies every time? They do have to participate, or they have to pay. They're actually just like you and I. They are actually paying to be there. They are not official timers. However, they are at that same spot all the time of 16-minute mile pace. So they are pain to actually be there at the races but they do um i i've heard that there's like 12 or 13 of them and they just kind of like rotate through the weekends and stuff because not everyone's as crazy as me and paying for registration four times a year pretty soon to be five when disneyland opens up next year as well um so yeah they they go through and they have to pay we're gonna go through more stuff about the balloon ladies on our 10k recap because it got intense it got really intense it actually got really intense and yeah, we're, we're going to get into that in just a few minutes here. Kids only stop for Max as the lines were so long. Curious if you have an opinion on how to improve the character meeting rates. Now, here is the problem with the character meeting rates, in my opinion. I think the character meeting rates all kind of come down to. Um, I think they all kind of come down to what people will go through. And so, so for instance, this time around, there's a lot of people, there's 8,000 people who are doing dopey. So because there's so many people doing dopey, I think a lot of those dopey people were saying, oh, I'm going to meet every single character. And me, like I go to meet every character anyways. So like for me, it was kind of making me mad because I'm like, like usually I'm meeting all the characters and usually there's not that long of a line. When you get to like the half marathon and full marathon, the lines are a lot shorter because not as many people are willing to take the risk of meeting as many characters along the course. Um, but yeah, so I, I think that's the downside of the 5k and 10k, especially during these long weekends when all of the races are part of the challenge. Usually the challenges are the 10k and the half during all the other weekends with the exception of the springtime surprise week. And that is the 5k, 10k and 10 miler. And so because of those challenges, a lot of people are trying to conserve their energy on the first race. And I think that's a problem. So I think if they made more character meeting greets, it would kind of spread things out a lot more. And um, yeah, by the way, I, while I'm answering this question, I'm watching this 
this uh, drama unfold here. We got hi going over to Facebook. Hi, dang it, can't do other things while watching the show on Facebook. Going back to YouTube. Um, suggestion: more characters, more characters, more characters. Um, oh, just what he said. Frank's here too. Yay, Frank! Frank, uh, Frank was my Frank's always my running partner. Him and I have been doing these races together for years. Absolutely years. Okay, well, let's keep going to our questions here before we go on to our uh, 10K recap. Was it cold when you met Tarzan? Just wondering how often they brought him in to warm him up. So um, it wasn't that cold during the 5K. Like, it was it was decent. It was, it was, like, a little chilly, but not anything awful. But it's the same standard as all the characters. They, they are out for 20 minutes, and they, they go off and, and get their break. So when they would do that, then Kerchak would be there along with Kala or, you know, they, they would keep on switching out the characters that were there. So, um, yeah. So even if he was cold, he was cold for 20 minutes and then he was able to hang out for 40 minutes in the back. Kind of win, win, win for him. Okay. There we go. My mom wants to know, how did the Frank fam do? She's, she is coming to the party late apparently. Cause we already talked about this mother. <laughs> Um, can't forget the better Studebaker. That was Timothy. Okay, let's continue on to our 10K recap. Keep throwing those questions into the comments below, and we'll go through and answer as many questions as possible as we go through here. Okay, let's kind of pull up this map again here. So hopefully we get a kind of an idea of how the 10K's course, the, yeah, the 10K course went. So the 10K course starts in the exact same parking lot, except for this time around, instead of coming around this way we're actually going this way so you go out this way ah you go through the auto plaza and then eventually you get to this bite right here and you do a u-turn and then you run back this way i'm going too far and then you curve around and you will run across this road right here and that road takes you into the backstage, and you start going backstage over by the Seas Pavilion. You go behind the land, you go behind Figment, and then you actually exit over by, or you enter the park by Figment. You hang a right, and then you go towards the UK Pavilion. You take a right there as well, and then you go out to the boardwalk. You go along the, the Beach Club, Yacht Club, past the boardwalk, come back in, and you go over by the France Pavilion, and then you go behind the France Pavilion over by Ratatouille, you come back over by Morocco. You continue going all the way around World Showcase until eventually you get back on that bridge between World Showcase and Future World. You go down past the Connection Shop, past Mission Space, and then you enter backstage. Same exit as all the other ones. This is this is the course. This was the course of all courses. Um, this was the course of all courses. If if there. And here, we're going to put this up because it looks like when you guys are on Facebook, one of you guys are on um, YouTube. So this this was the course of all courses. And this was the most drama we've ever had in the course. And I loved it. I, I You can ask Frank, who is, who is here in the chat room. He will tell you I was laughing hysterically. Like, I was laughing hysterically. I could not stop laughing for a good probably hours like day like for literally like the next day i kept on bringing it up because it was so funny to me so let, let's start us off with the characters because the characters are the big thing that comes into play here so before the race actually started we had fat cat there fat cat was is from uh chippendale rescue rangers if you didn't know fat cat and monterey jack also from chippendale rescue rangers were switching out with one another and um and here you go. And then you got a thumbs up, Frank fam. I'm just like the messenger here between people who are different apps talking to each other. Uh, <coughs> oh, man. <coughs> oh. Okay. So the two of them were switching out. That was before the course. So I was an A for this corral. Same thing for the 5K. It, it's very important that you know that I was an A. So the way the corrals, for those of you who don't know how corrals work. So you get your bib. And on your bib, you get a letter. So this is my my bib for the uh, half marathon, the full marathon. On the top here, you can see it says C. That's out of F. So it's A, B, C, D, E, F, <clears throat> with F being the last rail. For the 5K 
in 10K, it was A, B, C, or D. I was an A for the first two. So I got to be one of the first people to start. So for me, I was like, okay, this is great. I'm an A. I can meet every character along the course. And the way that we did it this weekend, which actually worked out really well, was whoever was starting ahead of the other people. So for the 5K and 10K, I was starting ahead of Frank and Timothy. And then for the half and full, Frank was starting ahead of me and Timothy. So what we would do is whoever was first, they would kind of go through and meet characters and then be in these lines until the other people would catch up. And then we could kind of have it so we're all meeting characters and people would run ahead and get in the character line. So, it, you know, it was kind of a nice little relay. So I started off <laughs> first. This is such a great story. So the first character there was Hercules. Um, I don't know who's muscular, but I think it's me. Uh, so we had Hercules. And then these are out of order. And then the next character we met was Princess Ada. Um, at that point, Frank had caught up to me. So Princess Ada was when you're entering back into the Epcot parking lot right before you went backstage. Right after Princess Ada was Scrooge McDuck. I love Scrooge McDuck. We haven't been able to know throughout the years. I love Scrooge McDuck. He's my favorite character. So there's us with Scrooge McDuck. So we're like, okay, Scrooge is here. We're going to run for Rafiki. Rafiki's next. At this point, my friend was in the last corral. And while she was waiting to start, she was talking to someone who was a character attendant. And they actually had the entire list of all the characters that were on all four races. Um, and so we knew exactly where each character was going to be. So it was like very helpful. So we're like, okay, Rafiki's next. We're going to run for Rafiki. We'll get in that line. And by that time, there's a chance Timothy might catch up, but he was in the last corral, so maybe he's not going to catch up to us. So we got to Rafiki. Timothy still wasn't with us. So we met Rafiki. And then we continue into the park. After you enter into the park, we go around imagination, and then you start going towards um, absolute pure chaos. So the next character we met... Who was the next character we met? I don't think I have the character on here. Because we waited in line for a character over by... by Canada. And I don't see that character on here. I can't think who the character was. But I remember waiting for a character by Canada, and I don't have that character on here. Oh, I know exactly who it was. It was Goofy. It was Goofy in his... Where is it at? It was Goofy in his Goof Troop outfit. So I was very excited because I had never met Goofy in his Goof Troop outfit before. That might be the one that I... Okay, there's there's Goofy. And that's his Goof Troop outfit. So we get to our next line. Our next line is Mickey and Minnie. At this point, Scrooge was probably about like a 10, 12 minute wait. Keep in mind, you're, you're supposed to be staying at a 16 minute per mile pace. So we wait for about 12 minutes. But like I said in my YouTube video the other day, that 16 minute mile pace is a buffer between you and that last person who starts. So for me, being in Corral A and the last person started about 40 minutes after me, I had 16 minute mile of pace plus a 40 minute buffer. So I was like, I got plenty of time. So waiting for 12 minutes for Scrooge, I was like, ah, that's that's nothing. Like, because I can still walk, I can still take my time, and life is going to be good. There's no way anything bad will ever happen, ever, ever again. Boy, was I wrong. Uh, <laughs> so, okay, wait, now I'm losing my pictures. Where's my? Where's the other pictures at? Because uh, I'm going back and forth between two different things. Okay. That's not it. There it is. Okay. I was like, that's the picture I took today. It, it's, it's, yeah, it's the file. Uh, so our next character was over by the boardwalk. Now, the boardwalk, if you know the boardwalk at all, there is the dance club, the Atlantic City Dance Club. That's where Mickey and Minnie were. The line went past the building and then halfway up the bridge, like, Going towards the Yadden Beach Club, like at the top of that bridge where it kind of summits, that's where the line started. So we're looking at each other. We go, eh, you know, we're far enough ahead. No problem. We're in line there. And that's when Timothy caught up to us. 
So we're like, oh, this is going to be great. We're all three of us. We're going to get a picture of the three of us with Mickey and Minnie together, which we did. Now, while we are meeting Mickey and Minnie and while we're in line, we are waiting for literally like 27 minutes. Now, keep in mind, like I said, I feel like a 40-minute buffer between me and the last place person. So this buffer is drastically dropping because obviously 27 minutes is a long time. 12 minutes for Scrooge, a long time. And then the other characters, we waited for quite a bit of time. Now, in between these, these characters, I was doing about a 10-minute per mile pace. So I was going at a decent speed, which was giving me more of a buffer. But at the same time, it wasn't like enough to make me feel too comfortable. And that gets us to Jesse. Jesse was over by where the ESPN club once stood. So we met Jesse. And then we knew because of our line or our, our list of characters that the next character we could meet would be Lumiere. Lumiere would be over in the France Pavilion. By the time we got to Lumiere, the line went, and I, I kid you not. Okay, you know the fountain that's in front of uh, the France Pavilion? Here, let me try to pull up that map. Let's pull up the map because it's going to make it so much more worthwhile for you guys to be able to visualize this exactly. Lumiere is waiting in front of that map or in front of that fountain, not in front of that map. We're pulling up the map. But this way, okay, here we go. So right here, this is that fountain. He's, he's meeting people here. The line goes up and around these planters, down here, and then down to about here. This is where we got in line. So we're looking at probably like a 25, 30 minute wait. And so we're like, okay, things should be okay, but maybe not. Who knows? And then all of a sudden, one of the Run Disney employees comes and he goes, ladies and gentlemen, just letting you know, the balloon ladies are passing the Skyliner right now going towards the boardwalk. So roughly about two miles behind us. You can see the line right now. Clearly, it's a long line. There is a chance that they might get here before you get to the front. And if they do, your race is done. You are swept. And Frank kind of says, should we get out of line? And then everyone in front of us gets out of line. I go, no. <laughs> Look at how much shorter the line just came. So all of a sudden, we get further up. They keep on coming through. The, the, the ladies are passing Mickey and Minnie right now. The line moves up a little bit more. They're passing Jesse right now. They're moving up a little bit more. We're probably about 15, 20 people back. And then across the bridge, going from the boardwalk to the ESPN zone and then down towards International Gateway, you can see the balloons going by. <laughs> and then I start yelling to everyone in line, snap the picture and go, snap and go, snap and go, people, snap and go. So all of a sudden, some people start freaking out. Because now I'm yelling, snap and go, snap and go, snap and go. And everyone starts taking their pictures and going. And it's going a little bit faster. It's going a little bit faster. And then you see the balloon ladies. They're entering into the park. Snap and go, snap and go, snap and go. All of a sudden, you see them going across the bridge from the International Gateway to France. They're literally like two minutes away. Snap and go, people. Snap and go. By the time we got to them, they, or by the time we got to Lumiere, they were literally coming right up. You can see it in my video. If you watch my YouTube video, you can actually see us meeting Lumiere and you can see balloons in the background <laughs> because it's the balloon ladies coming towards us. And so we get our picture and we start going. We run behind the uh, Ratatouille attraction, go past over to Morocco. And that's when we made the, the decisive decision that Geppetto's next. We got to meet Geppetto. There's no way. There's no way that, you know, we won't be able to, you know, not many people are going to be meeting Geppetto. So we meet Geppetto. We're fine. The next character is Daisy. We get in line. All of a sudden, balloon ladies are coming up. Balloon ladies are coming up. Balloon ladies are passing us. All of a sudden, the run Disney person goes, this is your final warning. Get out of line right now or your race is done. I took that very seriously. So we ran. <laughs> we passed the balloon ladies. There's a picture. Actually, let me let me find that picture because I think the picture is absolutely hilarious. We pass the balloon ladies and we get to the point 
where in the, the official race photo, you can see me with balloons behind me. That is the balloon ladies right behind me. I'm smiling because I'm laughing hysterically about the entire situation that's going on here. We get over towards behind test track and we get into line for Darkwing Duck because why wouldn't you? We're in line for Darkwing Duck. The line is about 25, 30 people deep. And then they start yelling. The blue ladies are coming. You have to get out right now. You have to get out right now. You have to get out right now. So we got on the line and we finished the race. I looked last night. There was 11,690 people. No, no, no. 11,691 people, I think was the number, who finished the 10K. Out of those 11,691 people, my time, because I started an A Corral and I took my time with all these characters, I only had 11 people with the slower time than me during the race. So, yes, yes, yes. Okay, let's go through and we're going to do some questions if we're going to do a recap of the half marathon. Um, okay, are you able to plead your case if you get swept and want to keep going, or is there no negotiation? So what they do is they literally build a wall of cast members in front of you and they put you on a bus and they take you to the finish line. So there's there's no negotiations. Once you're pulled, you're pulled. Like they're they're not gonna let you go by them at all. If you go back and you watch my 2020 marathon dopey challenge video, there is one point where I cut out the part where I was arguing with the police officers, <laughs> but the the temperature was so hot that day that they decided to shorten the course by 1.4 miles. And I was so upset because I wanted to do the whole race. And they were just, literally just cutting off 1.4. So instead of going down and around by Blizzard Beach, they were just having it so you would go across the street there and then join the, the people who already run by. And I was arguing with those people and they refused. They were like, nope, sorry, you can't go. And I started saying, that's, I, that's my friend right there, even though it was some random guy that I was just talking to about eating steaks. Um, cause we were talking about what kind of food we wanted to eat afterwards. And we're just, you know, two random guys talking about steak while trying to not die. Um, but we're while going, we're like, I was like, no, I'm with him. I'm with him. I'm like too bad. Course is cut short because of the heat. So yeah, there, there's no negotiations. It's just, you gotta go. And I, I argue with those people for probably, it was like, I, I thought about it afterwards. I was like, I really sat there and like, just was like arguing with these police officers for a while. Which is not like me to argue with people, but I was so determined. So you can't meet any more of the characters if you get swept. You can't continue racing if you get swept. You are literally put on a bus and taken to the finish line. Like, like you are done. Like you're it's not a matter of no more characters. It's a matter of no more running. Like you are literally done. Your race is done and they take you to the finish line. So so yeah, you can't meet any characters because you're you're literally taken to the finish line. Um so yeah, it's you guys stayed for a couple minutes until the last second. You have to run to the finish line. Yeah, we 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 kind of yeah we we had to go. So you no so you get your medals if you get swept, but you don't get your challenge medals. So we would have gotten our 10k medal, um, although I probably wouldn't have felt comfortable with it because I didn't complete it, but. Yeah, you don't you get your medal for that race, but we wouldn't have gotten our dopey medal. We wouldn't have gotten our our goofy challenge medal. So yeah. Um so anyways, let's get to our our 10k medal here. With our 10k medal, Chip and Dale. And then there's a little acorn that spins around in circles. They're like chips holding onto the I don't know pole and Dale's you know taking them to them. They should have them. Well, and you know what? It's funny because there was someone who actually posted on one of the Run Disney groups I'm part of, saying that they've actually seen the balloon ladies get swept because the balloon ladies weren't able to keep up. Keep up. So the balloon ladies aren't even official. Like they're not. They actually don't work for Disney, so they actually have the potential of not finishing the race as well. Um, but they're kind of like a clear indicator, like, oh, this is the end of it. And it's one of those things where I always do say that the people who don't finish, I, I give them all the credit in the world because at least they went out there and they attempted it. Even if they didn't finish it, I give them all the credit in the world. 
especially after this experience, I have so much more respect for these people than I've ever had before. Because being in that situation where at least like we knew that we were fast enough to pass up the balloon ladies because we've done so many races before. If I hadn't known that I could pass them up, that would be such an intense scenario because it was already an intense scenario for someone who knew that they could pass them up. I can't imagine someone who's really just like has never done this before. They're putting their heart and soul into this. And then all of a sudden it's like, Oh, like you have to get ahead of these people. Otherwise your race is done. I can't even imagine. So all those people out there who do get swept or get almost swept and are really put in there. Like I give you massive props because it was a stressful situation for us. I found it hilarious at the same time. Like I really did. I thought it was so funny. And I have been bringing it up for the rest of the week. And I was like, Frank, that was so funny. Frank's like, that was not funny at all. I thought it was absolutely hilarious. Uh, I still think it's really funny. Um, it made it, it made the entire thing so much more meaningful to finish that race. Like it, it really like it made me appreciate the medal more. It made me appreciate the entire experience more. It makes me appreciate that Lumiere picture more. In this picture here, let me pull up the picture. I don't think I showed that picture. In the picture. You can really see that. Uh, where did I go? I, I keep on losing this. You can see that I'm I'm pretty much in the middle of just like having a great time. Here we go. There's that. So I'm having a great time. Tim, he's loving it. And Frank looks like he's about to die. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that was our that was our 10K experience. Let's move on to our half marathon experience. Are the balloon ladies like old crannies? That's what I'm no, they're 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 probably in their 40s or 50s. Um, young ladies. Okay, so moving on to our half marathon experience. So the half marathon course is the exact same half marathon course it's always been. A few little twists and turns just because of construction. Um, but essentially, you start in the road in front of Epcot. You're no longer going to start in the parking lot. You start in the road. You run down to Magic Kingdom. You run through Magic Kingdom going um, through the bus loop. Then you run down Main Street USA into Tomorrowland. Then you take a left. You go through Fantasyland, uh, past between the Pooh, between Winnie the Pooh and... Um, uh, Seven Doors Mine Train, you go through the castle, and then after you go through the castle, you take a right, you go through Liberty Square, then Frontierland, and then you run past Grand Florian Polynesian, and you continue going down that road, which seems like forever, until eventually you switch around, and then you make your way back to Epcot. All okay. right, half marathon, amazing experience as well. The, the, whole, the whole race weekend, amazing experience. So let's start off with the pre-game before the race. We had a character meeting greet. We had Pain and Panic from Hercules. I had never met them before. Actually, I feel like I might have, but overall, Pain and Panic are amazing. I love Hercules. So I had to meet Pain and Panic. Um, along the course there, like I said earlier, Frank started this one a little bit earlier than me. So I was able to catch up to Frank. He met one character by himself, and then I met him at Beast. So we met Beast together. Also, I, I want to look at this real quick, too. My friend pointed this out to me. She's like, watch, because when you go through here, Frank's pants disappear. My, I, I, didn't know, I didn't even notice it while I was running with him, but my, my friend's like, oh, what happened to Frank's pants? So Beast is on the road from uh, Epcot to Magic Kingdom. Right after you get into the Epic or the Magic Kingdom parking lot, here is Jack Skellington. Frank still has pants on. Just you know, I'm I'm now like keeping track in my own mind of when Frank lost his pants. Oh, it must have been the next one. Um, so when we got over to Magic Kingdom, Frank got a little ahead. I'm trying to. I don't even know how Frank got ahead of me. Oh, I know what it was. I went to the bathroom over the Thicken Transportation Center. Frank kept on going, and then Frank must have stopped to go to the bathroom. Frank, where did you where did you stop to go to the bathroom at? Because I have no idea where I where I passed you at. Did you go to the bathroom over by the entrance of Magic Kingdom? 
That's all I can think of. I don't know. Um, I have no idea. Um, so anyways, so right at entrance of the Magic Kingdom near. Okay. Near the guest relations booth, I assume. Guest services. Okay. So I got into Magic Kingdom. I ran down Main Street, USA, took a right, and then I got in line for, for Buzz Lightyear. And so I can let people go past because Timothy's a huge Buzz Lightyear fan. So I waited in line until the two of them caught up to me. There's the three of us. And there's Frank's pants are gone. So Frank must have taken off his pants in the bathroom. Um, so there's the three of us with Buzz Lightyear. And then we got to the coolest part that they've never done before during any half marathon ever in the history of Disney. I've done a lot of half marathons. I've got medals upon medals upon medals upon medals. But I've never, ever, 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 ever had a ride open during the half marathon. But the Mad Tea Party was open that day, and I freaked out. I absolutely freaked out. If you watch my YouTube video, my reaction is literally I was recording already, and I just cut the part beforehand because my reaction was so genuine. Where I was like, oh my God, the Mad Tea Party. I freaked out. I was so excited. I we, So we hopped on the Mad Tea Party and I spun it like crazy. Because I was like, yeah, we're in a race. But I also want to have fun. So we did the Mad Tea Party. And then um, after the Mad Tea Party, we continued going down through the castle. And made our way to, uh, to Liberty Square, Frontierland. And then... We went to the backside of like Grand Floridian stuff. When we got to the Grand Floridian area, we met Tinkerbell and is that Silver Mist? I think Silver Mist. Periwinkle? Silver Mist. Um, after her, we had Ariel. And then after Ariel. We had Hades. And then after Hades, we had... I don't know why this one... This is, I got a, a better picture on my phone, but it's on a different folder. Uh, Jafar. Or you can just see me and Timothy there, along with Jafar's neck down. And then... Uh, and then Frank at this point, Frank didn't admit it to me until later on, but Frank said that he was nervous again about the balloon ladies. Um, something about the day before scaring him. I don't know. Um, but we caught up to him by the time we got into uh, Epcot. And then we met Miko, who would be our last... Our last character... Of that course, I believe. Let me just double check here. Yeah, that was our last character that we met on that course. And then when we finished that race, we got our half marathon medal. Which I think is a very cool medal. I love the colors. So it's Donald and Daisy. And like all the other ones, they've got moving parts to it. So you can have them run along the way. Um, also, the castle here. That is the exact same castle design that they had in 1994 for all of the merchandise. And that's why that was the color scheme of the thing, because that was actually the original um, Thingma Jogger there. Okay, let's go through some questions here, and then we're going to do our final recap of the marathon. Let's see here. I saw a lot of people kind of going through. That was our last one. I had so much fun with the 10K... The highlight of the weekend was definitely in the half marathon, full marathon. We were laughing about the 10K. The 10K was so funny. Like, that was literally so funny. Frank's face said, if you don't snap the picture of me, you'll hear dead. It was, it was, it was kind of scary. Not going to lie. It was super cold in the corrals. We waited for so long in the corral, and we were freezing. It was a very cold for the lot of them. How long do you wait in the corrals before the race starts? So, we got into the corrals around 4 o'clock every single day. The race doesn't start until 5 o'clock. If you're in A, so like the first two days I was in A, um, at least you're starting like right around 5, sometimes like 5.05, depending on how many, because they make mini corrals inside the big corral um, to kind of space people out more. 
So, so both the 5K and 10K day, I was out at there by like 5.05. But then the other day as I was out during the half marathon, I was out of there at 5, probably 20. And then for the full, I was, it was like 5.10, maybe 5.15. So yeah, it's, it's long. Why are the walks to the corrals so long, or at least it seems that way for the 5K? I guess it's a good warm up. So you think the walk to the 5K corral is long? The walk to the half marathon, the full marathon, it literally takes over a mile and a half to get there. So where you get to for the 5K and 10K, that corral, that's maybe like the quarter point <laughs> to where you have to continue going from that point to get to the starting line for the the half and the full. We always say you were doing like a 5K before you even get to the, the half marathon. Um, it was ridiculous. It, it takes so long. Um, my pants were disposable pants, very thin paper. So I put them in a recyclable bin, but some runners had real sweatpants. They leave. Yeah. So everything that it, so a lot of runners will wear, um, sweatshirts or long sleeve shirts that they're just going to dispose of that they don't want anymore. And then what happens is run Disney collects all the clothing on the course. They wash it and they donate it to local charities. Very nice. Um, so many Disney afternoon characters. I love it. Yeah, so every character that was on course with the exception of about like 10-ish, 5, 10 throughout the whole weekend were characters that were in the 90s, which I loved. How often is there a first aid area on the course? Um, I would say every mile and a half to two miles, depending on uh, the thing. What kind of snacks do they give you on the course? So during the half marathon, you only get one snack stop and it's little jelly beans, like um, energy jelly beans. So it's... It's good, but it's not great. I mean, I, I like it's a small little bag like this bag. So I usually take two and I'll eat all both bags like right away. And I try to eat it before the water stop because then if I have any like, you know, if I'm still chewing or whatever, I can just kind of like wash it down. And then during the half, they've got the same thing, but they also have it. So there's two banana stops or maybe three banana, two banana spots. I can't remember. I think it's two, but it might be three. And then they also have a chocolate stop, which like the best it's like it's not even like the greatest chocolate but it tastes like the best chocolate in the world when you get there because you're just so hungry and chocolate just tastes so good by the time you get there because it's a mile like 23 um <clears throat> i would have to stop at each first aid area um i did stop at the first aid area twice during the full just mainly because your legs are rubbing so much that um they have Vaseline and stuff there. So I just get it as like a precaution. So I got that twice during the, during the full marathon. Then during the half, I pulled fine though. Okay. Let's talk about the full marathon. Keep throwing your questions into the comments. We will answer as many questions as possible after we finish this. If we get any more subscribers too, we will go through and have it. So we answer, or we'll go into extra names here as well. What's up with the random cheese in the snack box? The cheese is the greatest snack in the world. Usually they come with chips, and this time they didn't put chips in the in the snack boxes, and it made me so mad. I can think of oh, there's three. There was three. Because oh wait, no. No, yeah, there was two. There was the one going into Animal Kingdom, there was the one coming out of Animal Kingdom. And then what what was the one at Blizzard Beach? Was that jelly beans? That might have been jelly beans. I was thinking that was bananas, but I think that was jelly beans. Okay, right, so the, the the full marathon. Let's let's do a real quick recap of what the course is, and then we'll go into characters and all the other stuff. So the course starts off again on the street in front of Epcot. You go down and around into Epcot itself. So you you kind of go around the the on ramp. You enter into Epcot over by Spaceship Earth, kind of near the entrance of the park. And then you go through and you go past um, uh, the Creation Shop. And, oh, by the way, shout out. I, I, I want to say this because there's at that point, I stopped to use the bathroom at Spaceship Earth. When I was leaving the bathroom, Frank was coming into the bathroom. And at that point, I met a guy named Kent. Kent said he's been following me for ages. Um and not just Kent, but anyone out there, if you're watching right now and you stopped and you said hello, it made my day. And trust me, it actually helped boost up my like 
like mentality so much more because like at that point you're just so tired and you want something to kind of keep your mind occupied and then when people are like stopping to talk it activates your mind so much more like just sitting there having a conversation with someone and getting to meet someone and it really helped like re-energize me every time i met someone so if you're watching and you said hello during the course thank you i i really you gave me a huge 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 boost um and it, it really helped like just it, it helped keep my mind occupied but at that point I, the only reason i think about it was because frank was in the bathroom i was walking so frank could keep, catch up to me and i met this guy named kent and um he's like oh i've been following you on instagram for years and we sat there and we talked for probably about a quarter of a mile and then he started taking off and that's when frank caught up with me like about 30 seconds later on and then actually i ran into kent again when we were entering into animal kingdom and um he goes oh i thought you'd be finished by now i said oh god i wish i was um but it just just meeting a lot of you guys during those races it just it really made my day so or I made the weekend and it helps keep my mind occupied. And, and that's the, I always say that running a race, like the running a marathon, it's more of a mental thing than a physical thing. Like physically, I know I can finish it, but mentally you just have to keep your mind active. And so like meeting people, it truly, it just kept your mind. Oh, I love it. So thank you. If you're watching any of those people who did stop and say hello during the races, um, you truly helped get me to the finish line. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, but anyway, so I just thought about that when I was like talking about, so anyways, you go past the creation shop and, um, and connections, you go down that little alleyway, you go past the janitors, uh, by the way, the janitors were over by mission space, literally every single day. Um, then you go past mission space, go past test track, you enter backstage, but instead of taking a left towards where the finish line is always at, you go straight and then you go past where you actually started the race at, and then you go down and then you kind of go around um, one of the on-ramps until eventually you start going down towards Magic Kingdom. You go through the Magic Kingdom parking lot through the Ticket Transportation Center, you go past Contemporary, and then you enter a Magic Kingdom through backstage over by where um, the confectioner is in, on Main Street USA. You go down Main Street USA, you take a right, you go through Tomorrowland, then you go through Fantasyland, and then you go through the castle again. You go into Liberty Square, and right before you continue going to Frontierland, this is the first time they've ever done this in the seven marathons I've done with Disney. Instead of going through Frontierland, you actually went through the veranda, and then you went over to the Adventureland, and you ran through Adventureland past Pirates of the Caribbean, and then you entered into Frontierland. You took a right, and you went past Slash Mountain and Big Thunder Mountain Railroad, and then eventually, <coughs> excuse me, and then eventually you went backstage, um, and then you ended up over by Grand Floridian. You took a right down there. You eventually make your way to the backstage of Animal Kingdom. You go through, or you enter Animal Kingdom over by Rafiki's Planet Watch, by the where the train actually takes you from Africa. You take a left there. You go on the back side of the Tree of Life between Africa and Asia. Then you go through Asia, and then you eventually make your way to Expedition Everest, which I rode again for the... Out of the seven marathons I've done, this is the fifth time I've done Expedition Everest during the races. After you get off Everest, you continue going through Dinoland USA. You exit by Dinoland USA, back where Primeval World used to be. And then you go through around the backside of Animal Kingdom to the longest stretch of the race. It absolutely drives me crazy every single time I've done it. And you go on this like 50-mile stretch, it feels like until eventually you get to Blizzard Beach parking lot. You go through the parking lot, and that's all you do. You go through the parking lot, and you get some snacks, and you meet Donald Duck. And then or we met Donald Duck. And then you continue going over to Disney's Hollywood Studios. When you get to Disney's Hollywood Studios, you enter backstage behind the Tower of Terror. You go past Fantasmic. You go by the Tower of Terror. And then you just run a little bit down Sunset Boulevard until you take a left, and you go backstage over by... Um, by once upon a time the, the the gift shop and between that and beauty and the beast live on stage then you enter or you exit through by the main entrance of hollywood studios you go down the ramp or down that little pathway that goes between hollywood studios and epcot and then you eventually enter into epcot over by the france pavilion or by i'm sorry by the uk pavilion you take a right you go around all of world showcase after you go around all of world showcase then you eventually make your way backstage again by mission space and then you go towards the finish line there Whew. so let's go through our characters that we met 
during the full marathon. I don't even actually know if I have all the characters on here from the full marathon. I feel like I might be missing a few. Um, I feel like this might be the ones that I accidentally deleted a few the other day. But we will take a look here and see. All right, so before the race, we met Esmeralda. Just Frank and I, Timothy was in one of the later corrals, and he wanted to get a head start to kind of get towards the front of his corral. So along the course, we're... Uh, the first character, this is Frank was ahead of me. He started a corral ahead of me, so I caught up to him over by Sebastian. That was one of the rare characters that was not a 1990 film. 1989 was when Little Mermaid came out. Um, so we met Sebastian, and then after Sebastian, our next one we met was in Oogie, until Oogie Boogie. And then we ran all the way to Magic Kingdom without another character, right? I'm almost positive. Am I positive? I am positive. Uh, we didn't need another character until we got the Magic Kingdom. Over there, we met Pluto. He's over by Hall of Presidents. Yeah, Frank got to see Belle. Because Frank started about five, ten minutes before I did. So he met Belle. Um, and then we made our way over to... Animal Kingdom. I'm trying to think, where, where do we meet Timon at? That was later in the day. I can't remember where we met Timon. I can't remember. Um, we met Donald Duck over at the Blizzard Beach parking lot. We met Launchpad McQuack on the uh, long path from Animal Kingdom over to uh, No Man's Land. <laughs> Darkwing Duck was over near the entrance of Disney's Hollywood Studios. And then I also personally met, where is it at? I also met Scrooge McDuck. Frank stopped at the bathroom. Scrooge McDuck was coming up. I was like, I'm meeting Scrooge McDuck. Okay, let's go through and answer some more questions before we wrap up here. Also, we'll see. We'll, we'll do like another 10 minutes of time unless we got some extended. Do we go up and... Subscribers. We did not go up in subscribers. So we'll give you guys about 10 more minutes answering questions. But if we continue going up in subscribers, we'll add some more time on there. Uh, okay, let's see here. So what are where are these characters that you can meet before the race inspectors can meet them? It's the Epcot parking lot. So when you go to if anyone can meet these characters. Um, however, if you are doing this as a spectator and you're and you're the person you're watching is not meeting the characters, please do not meet the characters before or after the race, but meet them while the race is going on, please. Because well, one of the things that drives me crazy is when you're in these lines and you just see some random people who are just like clearly not running at all. And they're just, uh, you know, it, it kind of drives me crazy. It really drives me crazy. So I'm like, oh, like we have to get to the corrals. And now you're just filling up the spots. But yeah, anyone can meet them. Uh, it's it's literally right in the middle of the parking lot where it's it's so easy to find. It's so easy to find. So it's it's literally the Epcot parking lot, and everything leads right to those characters before you get to the corrals. Uh, did you have a favorite costume you saw throughout the week? And I love the Up House, and of course, Jogging Jack Sparrow. I always love seeing Jogging Jack Sparrow. Jogging Jack Sparrow. Um, him and I interact on Instagram quite often, <laughs> um, just because I see him often. He, I think he follows me because he always likes all my running posts. Um, so all the character posts and stuff I post, he's constantly liking them. But I think Jogging Jack Sparrow is hilarious. If you watch my marathon, yeah, mar marathon video, I ran past him and we kind of have, I do a little video interaction with him. But he's, the guy comes dressed as Jack Sparrow and he stays in character from start to finish. I want to watch him one day get into a car and drive away. 
just just because I wanted to see him like have to break the character for a second. But it blows me away. Yeah, it blow it blows me away that how he does it. Um, but favorite costumes, I like that there was a girl I saw who was dressed up as uh, Brer Rabbit one day. She was dressed up as um, a Splash Mountain cast member one day. I, I saw her three days. There she was a Brer Fox one day too. So I think she was doing different Splash Mountain themes throughout the the whole time. Um, I don't know how he runs in that costume. My favorite part was when I was. Right before I got to him, someone came up to him and they said, oh, man, I can't imagine. I always say, I say this all the time to Frank. I said, I don't know how bad that costume must smell because he runs in it four days in a row. Like, I can't imagine how bad it smells. And someone was ahead of me and they go, man, they go, that, that must be so tough to run in or to or it must be so sweaty wearing that four days in a row. And his response was, I've been wearing it for 40 days or for 40 years, mate. <laughs> so. I thought it was pretty fine. Um, yeah, I saw the TikTok of him jogging on Main Street. That was pretty funny. Um, yeah, there's there's a lot of really great, great costumes. I have saw... I'm trying to think of some other ones that I really enjoyed seeing this time. I like the more unique ones. There was, there was a lot of 90s themes things. I saw Xenon, girl of the 21st century. I saw her multiple times the one day. Like There was like five of them. And I was like, there's like 20 of you here. What, what's going on? So, yeah, it's a lot of really random things, but a lot of really fun fun costumes. Like, I've only dressed up one time for a race, and it was a lot of fun, but it was also like just so much stuff to to carry. And and also, sometimes when you're running with these things on for the very – oh, there we go. Actually, I just said that. Why don't you dress up? Have you ever I, – I, here, let me find the picture of me the one time that I dressed up actually my, my friends that I dressed up with, I literally just left the park with them about two hours ago. Actually literally two hours. It was eight 30 when I left them. Um, the three of us went as my friend, Catherine was iron woman. Chris was the Hulk and I was captain America. That was one of the Avengers races. And actually, amazingly enough, this was this picture got us on the um, not this specific picture, but that picture actually got us on the Run Disney website. Uh, we met Hawkeye, and the picture of the three of us in Hawkeye posing ended up on the Run Disney website, which was I thought was pretty cool. But it's the only time I've ever done it. I, um, the problem with it was I had never ran in that before, so it like hurts. It, it, you know, like it's it's not as comfortable. So it's yeah. It's kind of nice when you kind of switch, you know, like when you're wearing stuff that you're comfortable in. Uh, is it the same characters in each race? I recall you hearing you say, I already met them or I'll meet them at the next race. So the only reason we knew which ones were coming up next was because I had the list this time. Usually the list doesn't get leaked at all. Like usually you can't find that list of which characters are on which course. This was a very, 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 very rare exception of when um we got the list like we've never got the list before and that's the only reason that i was like oh i'll wait for like for esmeralda i was like oh i, I can meet her tomorrow in the parking lot so we skipped esmeralda usually i would have said oh there's esmeralda i don't know when i'll meet her again so i'll meet esmeralda since i had a list i kind of knew that i could you know hold off for a little bit and and meet as or not we meet esmeralda um, it's not the same characters every single time. So actually, you know what? Let's go through right, right now. Ha ha. Cause I still have the list. We'll go through and we'll go through every single one here. Oh, here we go. Frank just sent me a few of these. There's a picture of us with Geppetto. And I forgot, we met Woody and Bo Peep, too, during the course. Um, okay, let me find that that list here. I got everything, everything on the list. Name the Disney movie. Okay, we're going to go through this really quickly. 
Oh, wait. So during the 5K, the characters in the parking lot were Mickey, Daisy, Donald, and Minnie. Uh, and then during the race, Kala, Kerchak, and Tarzan, Genie and Abu, Max, Chip and Dale, Mushu, Goofy at the finish line, cheering people on. Um, the next day during the 10K in the parking lot was Fat Cat, Launchpad, and McQuack, Chip and Dale, um, and Hercules. And then we had Ada, Scrooge McDuck, Rafiki, Goofy, Mickey and Minnie, Jesse, Lumiere, Geppetto, Daisy, Darkwing Duck, and then Donald at the finish line. On the 10, or I'm sorry, at the half marathon at the parking lot, we had uh, Flick, Pain and Panic, Timon. At the start line, we had Goofy, Esmeralda was there, Sally, Lumiere, Max, Beast, Minnie at the train station, waving above, Buzz Lightyear, Mickey Mouse, who we met, uh, oh, we met him the day before. Chippendale, Pluto, Colin, Kerchak, Tink, and Periwinkle, Hades, the Pumpkin King, uh, Tweedledee and Tweedledum, Jafar, Genie, Mushu, Lotso, Miko, and Daisy. I don't have the picture of Lotso. Did they not take our picture there? And then during the full, we had Mickey and Minnie at the start line. Um, in the parking lot. Uh, Esmeralda, Cloppin, Aladdin, Jasmine, Hercules, and Meg, Tarzan, and Jane. Cruella DeVille was on the course. Belle and Pocahontas were switching out. Uh, Sebastian, Painted Panic, Hades, Miko, Oogie Boogie, Flick, and Ada, Winnie the Pooh. Oh, we that's another one we had. We met uh, Rabbit from Winnie the Pooh. Beast, Pluto, Jack Sparrow, Fat Cat and Monterey Jack, Chipmunks, um, actually Chippendale, Dopey, who we met during the expo. Daisy Powerline. It wasn't Powerline. It was just it was Goofy and Max together. Uh, Adventures Club, which was from the old Pleasure Island. Mushu, Rafiki, Timon, Buzz Lightyear, Jesse, Bo Peep, and Woody. Donald Duck, Launchpad, and McQuack, Darkwing Duck, Scrooge McDuck, Genie, Abu, and Jafar. Well, I know we had I know we had him, but I don't think we have a picture of us with him, or maybe someplace. Um, wonder why there was no Pluto for the 5K. I don't, because usually they do. Usually in the parking lot, usually it's the, whoever the character is for that course. So usually during marathon weekend, it's the 5K is, is Pluto. And then it's like usually Dopey and Goofy or no, Dopey and then Mickey and Minnie. And then during the half, it's always Donald and Daisy along with, um, or sorry, during the 10K, it'll be like Chippendale. And then it would be like Minnie and then Dopey and then another character. And then the half would be Donald and Daisy and then Goofy and Dopey because it's part of the Goofy and Dopey challenges then. And then the last one would usually be Mickey and Minnie along with Goofy and Dopey. So we'll see. You sound stuffy. Are you sick? I'm not sick. I'm just congested from exhaustion. I actually feel 100% right now. Um, I just did not get a lot of sleep this past week, and I've been sleeping like crazy over the last few days. Still going to the park every day, but I have been sleeping like crazy. Crazy. All right, let's do our marathon medals here because we did not do those ones, along with our challenge medals too. Okay, so this is our marathon medal. It is the 30th anniversary. Um, so this goes around in circles. Ooh. Also, I love the fact that the logo there is what the logo was for Magic Kingdom and Epcot at that time. Tree of Life wouldn't have existed yet, and Tower of Terror would have been not out yet when the first marathon happened. It would be coming out later on that year. So that is the full. This is the Goofy. The Goofy Challenge is for doing both the half- and the full. It's supposed to look like a CD-ROM disc. And then Goofy spins there. And then you can see the characters in the background of it. Or if you really want to see them better, you can just turn around. And then we got all the characters there from throughout the weekend. And then our final one is the Dopey Challenge. And again, this is the 10 year anniversary of Dopey. And then this part spins as well. And this way, ah, this way you can kind of hypnotize people and say, subscribe to Brent Dodge on YouTube. Subscribe on YouTube. Ooh. 
He does. I think we need a repeat of you putting everyone every medal you have got ever gotten on. Frank actually said that the other day. He's like, "How many medals did you put on at that time?" It was a hundred and like seven or something like that that I put on, and that was during that was during COVID. I've ran since then. I've done one, two, three. Four. Okay, I've done. Let, let's just figure out the medals here. This was my sixth race weekend, but in addition to those six race weekends, I've done a virtual challenge was four. And then I did five more virtual challenges, which were canceled races that became virtual challenges. So that's another three, six, nine, 15, 15 medals, 19 medals. And then um, first race. Okay. I would be looking off into this, into the distance as I figure this out, 19 to 23. And then it was six. So it's 23, 29, and then four. So 34 or 33 and then 37, 41, 47. So I've, I've gotten 47 medals since I did that crazy challenge. So, yeah, I think we will have to do that again sometime. Do you listen to music while running? I don't. The only time I ever have, I, I do when I'm doing like, I'll run around my complex at night um, during my training runs. Um, so I run with music then I usually have one I've got here. Oh, I've got these guys right here. So I usually just put one in and then I have my other ear open. Um, so that way I can hear the surroundings around me. And then I usually run when I'm running at night with that on, but during the run Disney races, I usually don't just mainly because there's so much entertainment on the course. And there's different spots with music. There was a few spots where it, like there's not music or not entertainment on the course, but at the same time, I kind of like just taking in all the the surroundings and stuff, and not really distracting myself with my own stuff. So it, it was funny because at one point there was a, I was behind two girls, and the one girl says, "If you don't mind," or she goes, "If you don't mind, can we stop talking? Because I want to listen to my book on tape." So I'm thinking, "You're in the middle of a race, <laughs> you're, and you're going to be listening to a book on tape." I don't know. For me, I just want to take in all the surroundings and all everything around me. Um, I understand that some people need it to run with music and stuff, and but yeah, for me, I just like to to I don't know. I like to take in all the sights and sounds. That's just me. Um, I always like to be kind of in the moment with the kind of stuff. But yeah, and then like when I did the Frank and I did the Orlando half marathon like a month ago. Uh, I listened. I had my music on that time because uh, it, it, it wasn't Disney, so I, I didn't really care. Are there lockers? There are not lockers. What they do is they give you – oh, it's not within reach. They give you these um, – they give you bags at the – when you first start the races and – or when you do, like, your bib pickup and stuff, and you can use those to have it so you can put your stuff in there and they can hold it for you inside of like a, a van and then when they finish they can actually like look at your bib number and then they match it up with the the, the bib number that's on the bag and then make sure that they're giving it to the right person back i usually don't use i used to use them all the time like all the time and then i just stopped so what i usually do is i usually just bring my essentials with me i'll bring a credit card and my license and then i put it inside of the you know, inside part of my, um, you know, I'll, I'll pop this off and I'll put that in there. So that way I have that stuff with me. And then I just put my keys in my pocket and I run. So, um, yeah, for me, I, I used to bring it and I would have it. So I'd be like so nervous cause I'd have my wallet and stuff, my keys in there. And then I'd always have it. So I would put like a sweatshirt in there and have it. So those were like tucked into the, into the sweatshirt and stuff. And I would know that it'd be safe because it's like with the Disney staff. But at the same time, I was like, oh, what if they get to the wrong person? Blah, 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 blah. So for me, I I just keep all this stuff right here on my phone. And then I know it's with me at all times. So, yeah. Okay, it looks like I gave you guys like an extra 10 minutes than I said I was going to give you. Uh, so we are going to be wrapping up this episode right here. So as always, thank you everyone for joining us. Make sure that if you want to, or 
Tonight's episode was sponsored by It's All About the Mouse Travel Jazz Hands. Uh, make sure you stop by it's allaboutthemousetravel.com for all of your Disney travel needs. All of their services are absolutely positively 100% free. So make sure you book with them for your next Disney vacation. I'd like to thank everyone out there for joining us once again this week. Like I said at the start of the episode, tonight's episode was episode 699. Next week is episode 700. And to celebrate, we will be starting the entire thing out on the big blue ocean. <laughs> the, the big blue sea. Um, I was going to say the big blue sea, and then all of a sudden I, I forgot what the letter of the alphabet was. So we're going to be going out in the ocean. We're going to be coming to you guys live from the Disney Fantasy next week out on uh, uh, someplace in the middle of the water. So make sure you join us next week at seven or for our 700th episode, same time at 9.30 Eastern time for our 700th episode. I have no idea what we're going to be doing. We might be doing a ship tour. I don't know what day of, oh, you know what? Let's do that real quick. While we're here, while we're all sitting here together, let's try to figure out exactly what activities might be going on at that time during the cruise. And then you can be like, oh, that would be fun to do. And then you can, you know, join me. Because um, I'm trying to think, last time we did the ship tour and then the fireworks were about to start. And, but I was running low on battery. So we, we did a shorter show. And then this time, let's see, would it be firework night? I don't know. Let's see here. What? It would be the 18th. Okay. 18th. Two, two, two. Oh, this day we're going to Jamaica. Yeah. Okay. What other activities are going that day? Onboard fun. Let's see what onboard fun there might be. And that might give us an indicator on what it would be should we go to bibbity bobby boutique together <laughs> uh, uh, royal court no there's nothing too special that day so i won't really know exactly what's going on that day until we're actually on board so but yeah make sure you join us next week at the time you might be too exhausted after your seven hour excursion is it really a seven hour excursion is that what i signed up for I don't think it's seven hours. It's six and a half. <laughs> it's a six and a half hour excursion. Eric will be there with me. Eric and I are doing the cruise together along with Eric's wife and his son slash my godson. So, yeah, make sure you join us next week on the Disney Fantasy. As always, thank you everyone for joining us once again this week. I hope you guys all enjoyed. I hope you enjoyed our recap of the entire marathon weekend. Um, let me know. Are you guys going to do it? Oh, oh, one more thing we got. I forgot. I had this next to me for completing the marathon. We also got our, our finisher ears. Marathon 2023 finisher. Yeah. Look at that. Isn't that great? Oh. But yeah, thank you everyone for joining us. I hope you guys enjoyed. We will see you guys all next week aboard the Disney Fantasy. Until then, have a great week, everybody. And remember that anything can happen if you let it. Bye bye. Goodbye now. Goodbye. Goodbye now. Bye bye. Are, are they? Are they? Are, are they gone? Are they gone? Oh, good. My cheeks are just killing me. I just can't stand them.